What's up guys? So it is day five. This is the final day and we're going to get that cardio in before our weights like we have been doing before. So we're going to get it in as most people will probably do. Jay, if you just want to stand there, film me for the next 30 minutes going through this monotonous, pendulum-like, non-natural, really weird man-machine merge. See you in a little while. <laughs> As if you should know me better by now. This is all about functional, high frequency, high intensity training that has purpose to it. And as always, we start our routines off on the bike. So, f those guys. We want to have some fun when we're doing cardio. And like I said at the beginning of this series, if you don't do something that you enjoy, you're not going to get the maximum out of it. And I'm not saying you have to do this bag work, but this is what I love doing much more than that. If you love that, that is fine. I'm just making a point. I've shown you in video one how we break down this boxing round for round. I've shown you in videos two and four some combinations to help you build a bit of strategy on the bag or just make you feel more comfortable while moving. And that's exactly what we're going to do again to finish here. Again, we're doing six rounds, three minutes each round, 30 seconds rest. And I'm going to show you three more combinations to add to your arsenal to help you feel and flow much better on the bag. So, so far we've built you in with three solid combinations to go through with the punches. We then incorporated some knees and kicks. And now I want to give you just a little idea of some combinations that involve some head slipping and rolling. You always want to think about what they might be throwing back. So these are all little things that you can do to keep it entertaining, to keep you progressing and to make that mind work. So here we go, combination one is going to involve a slip and a roll. We're going to throw the jab out as we would normally pouring out, but then when you decide, we're going to throw the jab and roll off center. At the same time, we're going to step our lead foot in and across two inches. As we lean off center, we're then going to roll under and follow through with the right leg two inches. So it's off center with the jab and step through, roll, left, right, left, and then we're back out. Combination two, we're going to work in a more linear fashion. So this is going forwards and backwards rather than left to right. Really easy, we're going to start on a one, two. We're going to slip back and then come through with a power right. So it's one, two. Now we know they're going to strike back. So we sit our weight back onto our right foot and heels. Load that weight, slip the punch. They come back straight right and move away. So this is going to be a right, left, right, a three shot combination, but we're going to be power shots. We're going to come through guarding left with a strong right. As we do that, we're going to step our right foot out. As we step the right foot out, we then come through with, drop our weight, come through with the body shot, boom, follow through with the left foot to the right one, and then again, power shot, straight right. So we've now changed our angle from being face on, slipping off to the side, to come in with that shot down the pipe. So there you have it. That is your fourth day of bag work done. You now have a full breakdown of the rounds. You have three sets of different combinations to intertwine as and when you see fit. Don't rush them, take them slowly, build them up and just get better. Just think, if you mess up, it doesn't matter. Just stop, reset and try again. Now, the final one, final day. We're gonna downstairs, quads, thighs, shoulders, the second workout on each of those body parts to finish up our week. So boxing is done and out the way. We have got our sweat on. We're nice and loosey goosey. Now it's time to hit the weights as we have done all week. You should be feeling fucking sore, but awesome at this point. We're gonna do two exercises per body parts. We have three body parts today, quads, biceps, and shoulders. We're gonna do one compound and one isolation on each of those body groups. Five sets, eight to 12 rep range as a rule, but on the heavier weights, if you wanna do it six to 10 or four to eight to program in that strength training, absolutely fine. We're gonna start with our quad compound and that is gonna be a bit of a unique, lopsided kind of goblet squat. We are going to need a kettlebell for this one. We're going to be doing a free body squat. We're going to work each side again. We're looking at unilateral work to fix imbalances, make you stronger, make your core work and make you feel more connected to your body and the balance. We're going to do that by using a kettlebell on each side of the body independently. We're going to look for eight to 10 reps per side before we flip the kettlebell over. I'm going to start it on the right hand side. The trick here is to make sure that as we go down, we keep our hips level, get to the base, and we're strong at this base. 
making sure that we're not kicking left or right. By having this weight on one side only, it's gonna force our body to have to balance and keep everything in alignment. So this is where you're gonna really feel if anything's weak and isn't able to align the body, and it's gonna help you start to connect with those weak points and make them work where they should. So flipping it up, we're gonna do eight, bam, then we flip it over, same thing again. We're gonna come down, making sure we're nice and strong, squeezing through. Main tips on this, what I want to see, I want to keep the weight evenly spread through the feet. I'm going to keep my rib cage down, core engaged. I'm going to take a deep breath into my stomach when I go down to neutralize my spine. I'm going to allow my knees to travel where they want to go in line with my toes. And then at the base here, I'm going to stop nice and controlled and drive up through the hips, heels, boom, and squeeze the glutes at the top. Do this one right, you're going to feel a nice stress in the core, but not an overload. And you're going to feel the glutes engage, quads engage, and you're going to feel the ability to maintain a balanced drive is if you feel your hips kick left or right, that's when your glutes aren't firing, especially at the base of that motion, which is where a lot of people tend to release when they should be contracting. So watch for that hip kick. If you feel that, engage the glutes at the top, get down to the bottom, and again, brace, keep those glutes tight, and then drive up glutes and heels, glutes and heels. Our first bicep exercise, this is upper body, going from lower to upper, so you've no excuses. Energy's there, and this is a unique exercise. I don't see many people do, but it's really nice if you get it right, and that is crucifix bicep curls. For this you're gonna need the cables, both sides, as high as possible. Reach out, grab both using the horseshoe handles. From here, what we're gonna to look to do is keep our elbows elevated, but rib cage down like everything we've done. Glutes slightly engaged, core solid. We have our soft feet, soft knees. From here, what I'm looking to do is curl to behind my ears, keeping my elbows elevated. What you're gonna to wanna to do is dip the elbows as you pull in. Don't let it happen. Imagine there's pads underneath. You're gonna to curl to behind the ears, squeeze, and then keep those elbows high as you extend on that negative. Get that full bicep stretch, and then back and repeat. This is a really, really great exercise for focusing control and contraction on the biceps. Eight to 12 reps, five sets, go. Follow nobody, don't call me a sheep. I am a lion, devour the beat. They don't believe me, I'm scheming for weeks. Rushing to put in the hours a week, yeah. Then I perform on my hips. Old man in the oven and shit. I hear the fans, they all loving my hits. Matter of time, I'll be up in the pit. I'ma get big like Notorious. I know my victory glorious. They hear my lyrics on more of it. Yo, fans gotta wait till the chorus hits. I've been doing overtime, over and over from time to time. No nine to five. Got a lot of things on my mind. 365. I'ma find a way to get to the summit. See many try and they try, but they fail and they plummet. So next up, we're gonna be doing some lunges, but we're gonna be doing a little different. We're gonna be using plates. The reason I like to use a plate in each hand rather than a dumbbell is that they can sit closer to the body, which can tend to keep the weight more central and stop you rocking backwards and forwards as much. Plus, they're less cumbersome than a dumbbell, so it's nice to knock against your legs and remove that kind of concentration that you're trying to focus on. So what I'm looking to do is step out so that my knee is in line with the heel. And then I'm gonna drive through from that front leg that's extended. I'm gonna drive up and through bring the feet together and then step through and do the next lunge. What I don't like to do is step through from lunge into lunge. I think it's a little bit uncontrolled and it doesn't allow you to re-engage those glutes at the top of the motion before driving back through. And like I said, everything about this is about mechanics, contraction and control. So utilizing the ability to maintain a high energy level, we're gonna go from that lower lunge exercise to an upper body exercise, so there's no excuses to not fly straight into it. And this is gonna be rear delts on the ropes face pulls. This is one a lot of people do, but a lot of people get wrong. Grab these nuts. <laughs> what we're looking for in this, it's called a face pull. So we're looking to pull it to here. A lot of people end up pulling it down towards their chin. We need to keep our elbows up, and the whole purpose of a face pull is to pull through from your elbows. Because again, we want that shoulder to be the leverage point. We don't want our biceps and elbow joint to be the leverage point. We're gonna pull through to kind of just past your nose and eyes towards the temple, flaring those elbows back. So a lot of people start here and end up pulling upwards. Start at the height you're gonna finish. Pull through from the elbows and let your hands just be meat hooks. We pull through from the elbows, squeeze, and what we wanna avoid here is pigeon necking. If you pigeon neck, you're gonna engage the traps. That's gonna take away from the shoulders. So relax the neck, relax the head, keeps the neck neutral. Pull through, elbows flare, squeeze, and then release. Control the negative, squeeze on that positive. And this is how you're gonna get a successful face pull, and this is how we develop 3D shoulders. I pray to God, pray to God that I keep it a hundred. Many snakes, many snakes that be live in the jungle. I'ma find a way to get.
get to the summit See many try and they try But they fail and they plummet I pray to God, pray to God That I keep it a hundred Many snakes, many snakes That be live in the jungle Not telling me what I should do I'm done radio, all the cues Your opinion is overdue This is it, this is the final one of day five And I'm going to give you a super duper set to do here. This is gonna be two exercises in one. So this is gonna be a finisher, and it's gonna be a bicep curl into an Arnold press. We're gonna do this standing, we're gonna keep our core engaged, we're gonna stay nice and solid throughout, working the mechanics of the body through a natural range of motion. I love this exercise, it's fantastic if you've got shoulder impingements, it makes the scapula move through full range of the motion, but it's also gonna work that core as you have to stabilize as the weight is lifted overhead. Let's crack on. Double arm or single arm, have a play around, see what you feel best. If you want to do singles, what you're going to do is come up, curl, squeeze at the top, rotate out, and then press overhead, keeping a nice stable core, ribs down, don't let that chest pop, don't let the rib cage pop, bring it back down through that same range of motion, elbows high, and then slow on that negative and fight it. So that's what it looks like, single, and it's exactly the same, double arm, just moving both arms exactly the same time, and pressing through. What we're not looking to do is as we lift, not looking to lean back with the curl or lean back and press. We want to be overhead just like with that military press, making that shoulder and scapula work through full ranges of motion and that negative on the bicep, controlling it, making it again work through that full range of motion. Big one here is to keep those elbows high as you get to the top and roll them out. What a lot of people tend to do is they do a shallow roll like this and don't rotate that elbow outward. We want a full elbow press and back round. Boom. Super set, super duper set, finisher of your five day week. Don't fucking slack. My head up, but I lay low. I don't do it cause you say so. I don't like no fitty fitty. Recognize the potential. Hey, an army, or you messing with me? Hey, ain't nothing that I can't do. You sitting on your butt cheeks. I do everything but sleep. Hold me, we opposites. That's right, we vis a vis. Woo! Done? Done. That is it. So you've worked your biceps and shoulders in a single motion that's super functional to finish it off. That is a hard exercise. It's gonna make you work from your feet up and it's a fucking fantastic way to finish your work and finish the week. So this was day five. Unless you're adding that wild card day in of the accessories and maybe some more ab training on the sixth day, this is it, you're done. You get a bit of a break and then you repeat this process. Now if you wanna run this over a seven day split, that's absolutely fine. But if you just want to run this day on, day off, day on, day off, and just keep cycling it around. Once you hit that fifth day, go back to the first day on the next time you're in. Absolutely fine again. Don't be absolutely rigid in the way you train so to the point where you feel bad if you miss something or you're not in the day when you should. As long as you make it up, as long as you get in consistently more than you don't, you will see progression, especially with this way of training. It is high frequency, high intensity. Everything trains twice a week. I guarantee you're gonna see progression, you're gonna feel better, and it will not fuck you up. If you've enjoyed it, let me know. Make sure to hit the like button. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and hit the notifications to be aware of when I upload, because YouTube ain't gonna tell you. So you gotta do like an 800 click-through menus. Just do it once and then you'll know and you'll not miss another video again. Thank you all for the support in the meantime. We have some more self-defense coming. I am hooking up with a number of different teachers. So we're gonna have an MMA fighters, pro Thai fighters, maybe some wrestlers coming in there. So it's all different moves. So a lot coming as well as doing some more kind of mechanical side of stuff in terms of racing cars, building bikes, and all kinds of shit. So until the next one, I've been Lex. Thanks for watching. Boom, baby.